The world is full of mysteries, and now and then, something happens that shocks even the most seasoned scientists. Recently, something extraordinary happened in Tulare Lake that has stunned the scientific community completely. So what just happened in Tulare Lake that shocked scientists? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to talk about the shocking event that took place in Tulare Lake, California. Scientists have scratched their heads as they try to understand what happened. Tulare Lake, one of the largest freshwater lakes in the United States, is known for its stunning beauty and unique ecosystem. But now, it's making headlines for an entirely different reason. Imagine a time before the gold rush, when a vast body of water dominated the California map. This was Tulare Lake, covering around 800 square miles and teeming with fish and shellfish, supporting four distinct Yokuts tribes. The women of these tribes would even fish the bottom of the lake with their toes, bringing up mussels and other mollusks. But as settlers moved in and diverted the rivers for irrigation, the lake began to shrink. Then, in the 1920s, cotton farmers from the southern states came west and began to farm cotton on the lake bottom, doing everything they could to keep water from pooling there. Over 30 years, they succeeded. The landowners petitioned for the construction of dams on the major rivers feeding the lake that, to this day, are keeping water out of the lake bottom. This is arguably the most re-engineered landscape in the west, if not the country but wet years like this one can overwhelm the system. The lake re-emerged in 1969 and 1983, and 1997 was also a wet year. And now, speculation that the lake might return this year has released a torrent of interest nationally. Author Mark Erex of Fresno's book, The King of California, co-authored with Rick Wartzman, tells the story of how the Boswell Farming Company and others converted to Larry Lake to farmland. Arax is getting calls from around the country from people who are following the drama of the lake coming back, and some are even rooting for nature to outflank man and see the old Tulare Lake alive again. Even though there's no outlet to the Pacific Ocean, the size of Tulare Lake ebbed and flowed with rainfall and snowmelt coming in from the Kings, Kern, Kawie, and Tule Rivers and other smaller streams. In some years, the ground was so dry and rough that the explorers' horses would get their hoofs caught in animal holes. But wet years like this can overwhelm the system, and the old Tulare Lake may be alive again. The Tulare Lake region was once a bustling hub of activity with vibrant wildlife and thriving commercial ventures. The famous grizzly bear was at the heart of it, a symbol of the region's untamed wilderness. The lake was a hub of recreational activities, from fishing to wildlife watching, and was home to a rich array of aquatic creatures. Migratory birds flocked to the lake's shores, finding a peaceful resting place and plentiful food. But perhaps most importantly, the lake served as a vital source of water for the region's inhabitants, a precious resource that was relied upon for both daily living and economic prosperity. Though the lake's decline has brought changes to the region, the legacy of its importance lives on. Lake Tulare suffered a severe decline in the late 19th and 20th centuries due to human activities. Farmers annexed the lake for agricultural use and diverted its excess drainage, leading to its overuse. The lake's dams and basins were not maintained, which worsened its condition. Additionally, the high evaporation rate due to increased temperatures and seepages of the lake's soil added to the lake's decline. Despite the severe consequences of the misuse of water, modern lifestyles, buildings, industries, and farmlands have spread across the region. However, instead of agricultural practices, canals and reservoirs were constructed in the Sierra to conquer the problem with a water supply and diversion for irrigation purposes. The impact of the dead lake was devastating, as early reports stated that if the lake was still in existence, Cattleman City and Lemoor would be lakefront communities, and the town would be on an island. Alpo and Corcoran would be buried underwater. Over time, the lake's appearance became less frequent, with the natural rhythm that had once governed its rise and fall disrupted by human intervention. 
The diversion of rivers for irrigation and the construction of dams on the major rivers feeding the lake reshaped the landscape, altering the delicate balance that had once sustained Tulare Lake. Despite these challenges, the lake still made periodic appearances during the winter months, thanks to the overflowing rivers and abundant rainfall that still managed to find their way into its waters. However, as the 1900s dawned, these appearances became less frequent, a sign of the changing landscape and the impact of human activity on the natural world. The reappearance of California's Lake Tulare has caused chaos in the state due to the hazards caused by flooding. It is not the first time the lake has reappeared, but it is the first time violently. The lake's disappearance and reappearance date back to 1899, when reservoirs and canals were constructed to meet the high water demands of the increasing population. The lake had nearly dried out by the early 1900s, but grew naturally in the winter and continued to flow healthily. However, the lake gradually started declining in water level during the summer. In 1938 and 1955, the lake was restored to its glory, and marine aquaculture and productive farming were enabled again. But the restoration was regarded as too good to be true when the lake's water level rose to a flood threat in the area. To minimize the damages caused by flooding, dams were constructed. However, the same flooding state of the lake repeated history in 1983, 1997, and 2023. The flood's aftermath has caused many evacuations and migrations by most residents of neighboring cities. And all economic, social, and basic activities have been suspended indefinitely in many parts of Tulare County and beyond. The future is terrifying for California as an increase in flooding activities is expected in months for a water body said to be able to hold twice the water of the Temperance Flat Dam at one-fifth the cost. The chances of the flooding being curved are lower than the effort to be put in place, and the harsh drought and dry weather conditions have weakened the soil's strength to fight through the hazard. The heavy rainfall and strong gust of snowstorms from the change in weather are huge encourages for the flood. The city of Corcoran in Kings County, with a population of 22,000, recently declared a local state of emergency due to the potential threat of a rising lake. The city is located in the area of the Old Tulare Lake, and a levee was built five years ago to protect the city in case the lake returned. The top of the levee is about 188 feet above sea level, while the lowest point in the lake bed is about 166 feet. The Kings County Supervisor, Doug Verboon, stated that the levees would work and the priority is to protect the lives of the residents of Kings County, with Corcoran being the main priority. There are concerns about the possibility of land subsidence affecting the levees, but the lake bed is also shrinking and is still more than 20 feet lower than the levee. Currently, no one knows how much water will come to the lake bottom when the snow melts and the recent overflow of water from the Tulare River has caused panic among the residents. However, the city manager, Greg Gatka, has stated there is no need to evacuate as the levees will protect the city. To manage the backed up Tulare River water, the J.G. Boswell Company cut a levee south and west of town in Reclamation District 749. The water will start going towards the lake bed to be managed by Boswell in large cells. The California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, which operates both Corcoran State Prison and the Substance Abuse Treatment Facility, has stated that they will closely monitor the situation and coordinate with state and local emergency response agencies. There is no immediate threat and no order to evacuate either institution. The recent flood in Tulare Valley has taken a heavy toll on the agricultural lands in the nearby regions of the lake. Agricultural activities have been put on the back burner, and the priority is to evacuate people living close to the lake. Unfortunately, most of the farmlands are covered by water, and the loss is irrecoverable. This has dealt a severe blow to the agro-economy workers, farmers, and investors, who may never have witnessed such a devastating effect on their business in their lifetime. The flooded farmlands were major contributors to the food supply chain in the region, and thousands of residents depended on their survival for their livelihood. The consequences of the flood are far-reaching, and the whole of California, along with its agro beneficiation states, is likely to experience a food shortage due to the loss of crops, including tomatoes and other produce.
The financial repercussions of the flood are devastating, with losses to the tune of over $336 million, and their situation may worsen in the future. Many farmers have had to abandon their operations due to the rising water levels and relocate their livestock to higher grounds, while many animals have suffered from the damages caused by the flood. The government has taken some steps to combat the never-ending flood, with Governor Newsom signing an executive order to support Tulare Lake Basin flood response. Several agencies and departments have provided technical assistance, aid, and resources. California's fire crews have worked hard to prepare areas prone to flooding and built a mile-long portable barrier to keep water out of protected areas. Despite the efforts, the priority remains saving the lives and livelihoods of flood victims, and the impact of the flood on California's economy and its citizens remains an unsettling and vulnerable state. As scientists and experts continue to study the situation in Tulare Lake, one thing is certain – we cannot afford to ignore the warning signs. It's time to take responsibility for our actions and work towards a sustainable future for ourselves and our planet. In the comments section below, share your thoughts on whether the lake's return is nature's warning and if California will come back unscathed from the flood. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the notification button for updates on new videos.